Welcome back everyone. Today we have Gage with me instead of River for story time with Mommy and River. And we're gonna read one of Gage's favorite books called The Three Little Pigs. And this one is adapted by Gavin Bishop. All right guys, here we go with The Three Little Pigs. Once again, this one is retold and illustrated by Gavin Bishop. One day, Mrs. Pig decided it was time her sons left home. So she packed them some lunch and sent them off to seek their fortunes. The first little pig met a man carrying a bundle of straw. Please may I have some straw to build a house? Asked the little pig. The man gave him some straw and the little pig built himself a fine straw house. Before long, a wolf came by and knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff. And I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down and ate up the little pig. The second little pig met a man carrying a bundle of sticks. Please, may I have some sticks to build a house? Asked the little pig. The man gave him some sticks and the little pig built himself a fine stick house. It wasn't long before the wolf knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. And at last he blew the house down and ate up the little pig. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. Please may I have some bricks to build a house, asked the little pig. The man gave him some bricks and the little pig built himself a fine brick house. Soon the wolf came by. He knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he huffed and he puffed. But no matter how hard he tried, he could not blow the house down. When he found that he couldn't blow the house down, the wolf said, Little pig, little pig, I know where there is a field of the biggest turnips you've ever seen. Where? asked the little pig. Why, in Mr. Smith's field, said the wolf. If you are ready tomorrow morning at six o'clock, I will call for you and we can go together. Very well, said the little pig. I'll be ready. Next morning, the little pig set off for Mr. Smith's field at five o'clock and gathered a whole basket of turnips. The wolf arrived at six o'clock and called, Little pig, are you ready? Ready, the little pig replied. I've already been there and back again, and I have a nice pot full of turnips for my dinner. The wolf was very angry, but still thought he could trick the little pig somehow. Little pig, he said, I know where there is an apple tree that grows the reddest, sweetest apples you've ever tasted. Where, asked the little pig. Down at Mary Garden, replied the wolf. I will call for you at five o'clock tomorrow morning and we can go together. Next morning, the little pig woke up at four o'clock and set off for the apple tree, hoping to get back before the wolf arrived. However, because he had further to go this time and because he had to climb the tree, he was just coming down from it when he saw the wolf approaching. So, you're already here, little pig. Are they nice apples, said the wolf. Yes, delicious, said the little pig. Here, try one. And with that, he threw an apple as hard as he could so that the wolf had to run after it. The little pig quickly jumped down and ran home. The next day, the wolf came to visit again. Little pig, there is a fair at Shanklin this afternoon. Shall we go? Oh, yes, said the little pig. What time will you call? At three o'clock, said the wolf. As usual, the little pig set off well ahead of time. At the fair, he bought a butter churn and was carrying it home when he saw the wolf in the distance. Quickly, he climbed into the churn and the churn toppled over and rolled down the hill with the little pig inside. The wolf was so frightened that he ran away home. Later, he went to the little pig's house and told him how he had been attacked by a huge round thing that came rolling down the hill at him. The little pig laughed and laughed. Ha ha, that was me who frightened you, said the little pig. And he told the wolf what had happened. The wolf was now extremely angry and told the little pig that he was going to climb down the chimney and eat him up. At that, the little pig quickly put a big pot of water on the fire to boil. 
as the wolf came down the chimney, the little pig took off the lid and in fell the wolf. In an instant, the little pig put the lid back on the pot. That was the end of the wolf, and the little pig lived happily ever after. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. We sure did. And please subscribe and like and put on your notifications so that you can be notified of all the other stories that we do. Thanks, Gavin. And we hope to see you in the next video. If you have any suggestions of books you would like to, me to read, please leave in the comments.